That was good, eh? Right on, seat two, right in line. Hi, I'm Paul Brody. Back in my shop, Mitch behind the camera. You can't see him, but I assure you, Mitch is working hard. So here we are on the gravel frame, and I guess this is part something. The next thing to do is, is the top tube. We need to miter the top tube. Thanks for hanging out in the shop, by the way. We appreciate that. Next is the top tube here, and we have to miter it. We have to check and see where the butts are, because when you know where the end of the butt is, that helps you to know where, where the tube gets mitered, because then you have a choice of where the butts go in relation to the frame. So I got the butt detector right here, got my red felt pen. Well, on about zero here, and I got my felt pen. So we're, we're watching when the needle goes down. See that? Right, right there. That's where the butt is. That's where the butt ends. So now we'll go to the other end. It's a 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0.8 tube, which is, which is commonly called an 858 tube. Okay, see how this butt is much longer, much longer. So there's a long butt side and there's a short butt side. So yeah, I thought that was gonna be the case. On the Tangay tubes, you can, you can see the Tangay logo. When we used to build frames, that always went up to the front. That's how we did it back then. We didn't have the butt detector, so. Let's go over to the drawing. This is where the butts are. Got the red felt pen mark. And let's actually look and see how long the tube has to be and where we want the butt situated. Here's the top tube as, as it's drawn on the frame drawing. And here's the butt. So what I'd like is up at the head tube, there's a lot more force when you're riding, especially if you go over some rough terrain. So I like the butt to be longer here. So can you see here, that's how long the butt would be. And then we have a really short butt down here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, this is the miter line. So I put an M there. And then we want a hacksaw line, HS for hacksaw. So. We're gonna cut it, we're gonna miter it, and the angle is quite small, seven degrees. Okay, I think it's centered. I'm, I'm centering it by my eyeball for how the hole saw is hitting the end of the tube. This is the actual miter now. Okay, what I'm looking for is Here's the mark of where the, where the rear of the top tube is gonna go. So this should be level like, like so. I'll bring the line around a little bit so Mitch can see. And it's not bad for a first cut. Can you see how, see how it's a little low? That's where it wants to sit in the miter. So it's a little low. So. We'll just give it a little file. How I file a tube, it's gonna to have to go up that way, so I need to take a little bit off here. Hold it between my, my knees, and then I see how it's resting on the table, and I got my hand around here. Then I, I line up the miter with the file, and I, I level it with the miter, and then I raise it up a little bit. That's what I want. Let's have a look. 
That looks good to me. Can you see how it's level with the line? So I like that. So one thing I have to do now, since you were gone, I did some nickel silver here. Can you see how I nickel silver uh, a down tube onto the bottom bracket? I also drilled a couple holes. That's for the seat tube so that if water goes down the seat tube, it's got somewhere to go. It doesn't just sit at the bottom and rust out the seat tube. It goes into the bottom bracket, but then you can empty that or put a drain hole on the bottom. And we have to drill the holes now for the water bottle bosses. Much easier if I drill them now while this is a, just a tube that I can hold. So we're going to wander over, we're going to center punch. You can use a center drill. We need quarter inch holes. There, there. Can you, you can actually probably see that. There's a little bit of a shadow. That really helps when you have to use a center drill. And a little bit more. I have this. This is what holds the, holds the top tube up. It's a holding fixture. So like that. So we need to make a mark here now because I've got the seat tube angle all set up here. Actually, we're, let's make a mark on the drawing. Let's do that. I got the ruler at the base of the miter, or the lowest part of the miter. I'm lining it up with the head tube here. That looks good to me. And then I come over here, and then I make a mark. That's where the miter wants to be. So now I'll put it on the frame and I'll do a, a double check. Let's see if the, if the frame is in agreement with the drawing. It's not. So there's the line. You can see that this is, this is, this wants to be more forward. So if we're going off of the drawing, we have to move this a little bit. Let's try that. A little bit slacker there. And that's a little bit of a compromise. It's uh, so the miter line is actually up a little bit. It doesn't make a lot of difference. I think I think one degree of moving a seat tube on an 18-inch frame. We figured out that was one quarter inch. So I'm not moving. I'm moving maybe. There's the first line, and then there's the second line, moving it about eighth of an inch. So now we have to hacksaw. We're going to hacksaw right about, right about there. That's the hacksaw line. This is the miter. So we have a different angle. So we, we need to change hole saw size, and we need to change the angle. Those are things you have to remember. Because when I started building frames, it's too easy to go from one to the other and not change the angle. That's a mistake. It's a touch low here, so I'm going to just... There we go. Okay, so that's the line we want right there. So the jig has to come up just a little bit. So this is what I do. I give it a tap. So it needs a little file right on the bottom. 
So we'll do that quickly here. It could be just a burr on the end. See how that fits. Let's look at that. So that's where we want it. And it looks like a, a pretty good fit. So I think what we're gonna do is take off the burrs, give it a little sand, and then we'll tack it up with the torch. In Frame Building 101, there was a sequence of how we tack this up. So I'll just, I'll just go through it really quickly. And there's a reason why, but I, I'm not gonna say it all right now. There's one, two, three, four. See, it's got a four right there. Five, and then on the back is six. So there's a reason for those things. And when I have more time, I'll explain a little bit. If I press down here really lightly, then this won't lift up. So I've got the cone pretty close to the head tube. The head tube's gonna take more heat than the down tube because the down tube is an end. And I want the tack to be maybe 3 8 of an inch long, something like that. Not too, not too huge, but not too small either. There you go, it's melting. And that's, oh yeah, this is working nicely. Okay, so that's one tack done. And then, I'll do this one. So I need to put more heat into the head tube because this part of the fixture is acting like a heat sink. So, got the cone really close to the head tube. A little bit of heat going on to the top tube, not much. So of all the tacks, it's the top tube which gets an extra tack. And the reason for that is because the front uh, a triangle is a trapezoid. It's not a triangle. I know it's called the front, front triangle. So when you have a tack on the top and the bottom, it locks that and, and the trapezoid can't move. So that's one of the reasons why, why the tacking sequence is what it is. There's the mark for the top tube and the top tube has slipped under it. What happened is I heat this up and the tube expands, it pushes it back. And then when this cools down, the tube becomes shorter. So what we're gonna do, this is how we fix it. We hold it up and we give it a tap. So now, now everything's lined up. Notice I'm resting my hand here. Gives a little, little bit more support. And I want the minimum amount of heat. I want to get in and out of there quickly. Don't want to hang around and preheat forever. Okay, on the, on the triangle here, I, I, just, I was just thinking about it, and I have a Tangy tube, a True Tempered tube, and a Reynolds. How's that for a mix? It comes from around the world. Okay. And this soon is the moment of truth. If you place the frame on top of the drawing, you know how close it is. It's very hard to get it absolutely perfect. That's what we found. And uh, when I was teaching Frame Building 101, there was usually a discrepancy somewhere. It was often the, the actual angle of the seat too, which isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference, but it's nice to get it, it close to what you want.
Come on. There we go. Okay, walking to the drawing. We want to line up the bottom bracket shell and we want to line up the bottom of the head tube. And... Look. Oh! Well, look at that. That is... That's basically perfect, so... Yeah, and there was a little bit of guesswork in there. Which side of the red felt pen line I mitered to, but well. I'll give myself a gold star for that one. So, I think what we're going to do now, I'm going to work on the fork a little bit. We have to, I have to mount, mount the caliper. And I made a couple of, of tubes with a thread in them, heavy wall tubes. And I have a, I'll show you. It's easier that way. Here's my fork. And this is a fixture for a post mount for the caliper. There's ISO mount, there's a post mount, and there's a flat mount. Flat mount goes like that. It's for road bikes, it's for small rotors. I think, it, I think you only get a flat mount up to 160, so this is a post, post mount. See these two pieces that I made? See that and that? That's what holds on the caliper. Here's the caliper, the nice little Hope caliper. And that fits onto there. So, so then I took a piece of cardboard last night and I tried to figure out how I'm going to attach these two, I don't even know what to call them, onto the fork. Now, one of the things going on, can you see the angle? Can you see it's like that? My front hub has a spacing of 110, so that puts it out five millimeters more. Often a standard is 100, but that's just what I have. I have it, so I'm going to use it. And what that means is that these are a little bit inset more. So this is at an angle. Really, you want the mount to be right under these. That's the strongest way. So I have to overbuild this a little bit. And I'm going to make it out of, I found some one quarter inch plates. So I really have to drill big holes in there. Can you see the holes I've marked out? And I don't know if this is, if it's going to be the final one. I'm pretty sure that once I make this, I tig tack it on, I'm going to figure out a better way of doing it. But I want to do this now. And then you can see the process of how I'm making this. And then we'll, I've got a wheel and we've got a caliper. We'll just see if it all fits. And maybe I like it, but I kind of think I'm going to redo that. That was good, eh? Right on, seat two, right in line. Okay, I stopped patting myself on the back. I got my steel, it's hard to see, red felt pen, but we're, we're gonna head to the mill now. I'm gonna put an end mill in there and I'm gonna mill those out. That's nicer than hacksawing. We're gonna drill three holes and then we're going to hacksaw it, and then we're going to see if we can make it fit. This is the hard part, making this go around these guys, having a nice fit there, because this whole thing is at an angle. So if I make another one of these, I'm, I'm kind of expecting that to happen, but we'll just see what happens right now. We'll play along and and pretend that this is the real, well, it could be the real one. So hard to know. block underneath. Not bad. That's the mark I made right there. 
This, how I, I cut that with the scissors, that's not exactly what I want, so I modified the lines a little bit. And this one's going to come in across like that. And that one comes down like that. I might have to make a second one because Usually the first one, I don't get it right. I think that's what it looks like. Try that. Oh, it's at an angle. Oh, I see it's an angle. I forgot. Well, well, we're just having fun right now, that's all. So, looking back, it's about there. And that one wants to be at an angle, so. I loosen this, we can see how well this fits. And can you see how it's not quite, not quite wide enough, but that's okay, I got a file. Well, we got a, a little bit of a fit happening here. It's very, very close. And that might be okay just to, just to tack it on. I have to drill an air hole. This is a, a, a sealed tube. And if I don't drill an air hole, when I tick tack it, it's gonna pop. So I'm gonna make a line here. We'll put a tiny little hole in behind there, and then I can tick tack all I want. My, oh, it moved. I'm just winging. Look at that gap. Oh, okay. This is this is obviously the first one. It's the prototype. I'm just gonna stick a piece of metal in there. We'll just see if the jig lines up. And that all happens. Wow. Okay, we're gonna install the wheel, install the caliper, see what it looks like. These mounts are, are hitting the rotor. So, 
a good thing to check and just do a couple little tacks. So we have a problem here. I don't know exactly. Let me just put this in, in a little bit. Doesn't want to fit. Oh, there it goes. Well, no, it's pushing, see, it's pushing away there. Well, there it goes, okay. So, it's lined up on the slot, but these mounts have to be over more. Or I shave them down, I shave them down a little bit. Anyway. It's not fitting right now. Oh, I see. Look at this. And, and the caliper has to come down. So, so this has to be shaped like that. I can't have a straight line across there. Okay, I learned something. Thank you very much for watching. This didn't quite work out. I need to do a modification. But that's okay, because I said that this is probably not the first one. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffees, it would be much appreciated. Take care. See you next time.